one, and thank you for tuning in here, at least to this optional um, idea about horizontal asymptotes. And yes, this is optional. So, um, you know, if you would rather not see like the background about white horizontal asymptotes, you know, where they kind of come from or what their idea is, and this kind of idea, um, if you're not planning on taking calculus, you know, um, you don't necessarily need to do this. But if you're just curious, want to learn, then welcome. All right, and we're going to talk about some of this stuff. All right, so. Um, so what I've got for you here is to ask you a basic question of, you know, what happens to the following functions as f of x approaches infinity or negative infinity, which is essentially how we find a horizontal asymptote. A horizontal asymptote is kind of like, you know, the behavior of our function as we go either really far to the right infinitely far to the right or infinitely far to the left. The x values then, in other words, because, um, oops, and I shouldn't say as f of x approaches infinity, then I should be saying here x approaching infinity. Like so, okay? Or x approaching negative infinity. As we go really far to the right or really far to the left, like that. Okay? So, um, in order to do that, I have some functions here for you, okay? Now remember, we can use our graphing calculators to kind of mimic this idea of approaching infinity or negative infinity by going to the table function, okay? This is not, and again, what we're really doing here is we're evaluating a limit. We're trying to figure out, because you can never actually get to infinity, right? I can't like, I can't really like plug infinity in and evaluate it like I could if I plugged in like a two or a three, um, but we can still kind of like, you know, do a little bit of analysis with this using the idea that, you know, I just we could use a very large number for x and increasingly large numbers for x. So I mean, let me actually pull up my um, calculator here. <clears throat> okay, and so we'll go to that very first one. Oops, I forgot what I was looking at. Uh, 1 over x minus 1. Okay, so 1 over x minus 1. We'll type it in. So 1 divided by parentheses. Uh, x minus 1, so it's parentheses like that, okay? And I'll go to my table, I'll set my table to be automatic, I'm sorry, ask for automatic, and I'll go to the table here. And again, just to mimic approaching infinity, I'll do like 100, and then like 1,000, and then like, I don't know, like a million here. You can see that as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, our decimals get, or the y values there get smaller and smaller and smaller, but not like so small they go negative, they get closer and closer to, to what number? And the answer there is zero, right? And if I want to uh, mimic approaching negative infinity, I could do like negative 100, negative 1,000, negative 10,000, or, you know, whatever, 1 million there. Okay, you can see it's also getting, starting at, you know, this um, y value of negative 0 0.0099, and this is, you know, negative 9.99 times 10 to the negative fourth there. So again, it's a very, very, a negative number that's very, very close to zero, right? And so in other words, we can pretty much see, oh, okay, as we go, as x goes to infinity, or negative infinity in this case, right? It doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative infinity, f of x is going to go to um, zero. Whoops, just right through it, okay? So there's kind of like our, our key right there, we're going to zero, okay? Um, and so you guys can go ahead and pause the video if you want to and just try and do that for yourself real quick while, um, you know, to, to try it for yourself and for all these six functions here if you want. Or you can just, you know, unpause the video and watch me do it because I'm going to do it right now too, okay? Um, so again, you have the power to pause the video if you want to give it a shot for yourself just to see if you can do it. You need to do it for all six. You can pause it for, you know, one or two of them if you want to just to make sure you can. But anyway, we'll go ahead and proceed here. Okay, I'm not going to go to a graphing calculator for all of these. Um, it turns out if you do this next one right here, you're going to get that as x approaches infinity or negative infinity. And you know, I'm just going to put like a plus or minus there in front. So whether it approaches positive or negative infinity, it doesn't matter. f of x will always approach a 1 in this case. Okay, not 0, but 1. Okay, I'm here for this next one as x approaches infinity. So again, positive or negative infinity doesn't matter. Either one you pick. This one's going to go to, well, either positive or negative infinity here. Okay, so this one, in other words, does not have a horizontal asymptote because our function increases or decreases without bound. Okay, the y values don't approach a single number there. Okay, maybe I shouldn't put an equals one, it approaches one. There you go. Okay, um, now this third or fourth one, I should say here, all right, if you type this one in your calculator and evaluate it, you would see that as x approaches plus or minus infinity, um, that f of x will approach zero. Okay, so these two kind of match up with their behavior there, right? All right, 
Um, and then this next one here, as x approaches positive or negative infinity, f of x approaches, well, in this case, it's not 1, it's going to be 4. Okay, again, if you type this in your graphing calculator, <clears throat> type this function in your graphing calculator, use your table to put in really, really big numbers for x, really, really small numbers for x, um, then you can also see <clears throat> um, that as well. Okay, you'll see this behavior going to 4. Okay, interesting. Um, and then the last one here, uh, x cubed plus 1 over 1. I mean, it's not really a rational function, although it technically is, I guess. It's a polynomial over polynomial. But anyway, um, if you type this one in your calculator, you would see that, again, as x approaches plus or minus infinity, f of x will also approach plus or minus infinity. So in this case, again, these two are kind of similar. Okay, and that's why I kind of organize things the way they are. We kind of have this, like, um, categories, three different categories that we created. Situations where the functions both approached zero, so in other words, the horizontal asymptotes were at zero, okay? So, H A Y equals zero, H A Y equals zero. And again, how do we know there's a horizontal asymptote there? Because as X approaches infinity or negative infinity, okay, right? Um, then these, both these function values, their Y values approach zero. So that would indicate a, again, that an asymptote is kind of like what your function approaches, okay? It's like the approach of a function that there's a particular value that it approaches, okay? Um, so we have those horizontal asymptotes. Here in this case, we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 1 and a horizontal asymptote of y equals 4. Now I kind of categorize these together because these are both non-zero um, horizontal asymptotes, but they still exist as horizontal asymptotes. And then finally over here, there's no horizontal asymptote and no horizontal asymptote, okay? So what can you see is maybe similar about these two functions versus what's different then about these remaining functions over here? Okay, so again, pause the video and see if you can see any similarities between the functions that are in the columns versus the differences between the columns, okay? And see what you can come up with there. Okay. So if you had a chance to think about this, it has to do with the degrees, okay? The degree of the numerator and the degree of the denominator. In this first category here, how does the degree of the numerator compare to the degree of the denominator? Okay. The degree of the numerator in both cases happens to be one less than the degree of the denominator. That doesn't matter too, too much. What really matters is that the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. Okay, versus this next one in the middle column here. Okay, how did how, what compares here, or what what how do these two compare? Well, in this case, the degree of the numerator is equal to the degree the degree of the denominator. Remember, the degree is just the highest powered term in your polynomial there. Oops, I'm gonna put in the same order I've been doing. So numerator's degree equals den degree of denominator. And then what's this last column? Well, in this case, the degree of the numerator is greater. Okay, and so we create these three different categories um, for um, ways to classify our um, rational functions in order to find their horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so long story short, if you have this situation right here where the degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator, then you will have a horizontal asymptote always at y equals zero. Okay, and your end behavior will always be as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches zero, and as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches zero. For this category right here, when the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator, how do we come up with the horizontal asymptotes here? Where do we get this one from? Where do we get this four from? Well, again, look at your functions. Okay, we see a four right here. Okay, but we don't see any ones up in here. But they're there, right? I mean, there's a one over a one here, and here this is a four over a one, okay? So the um, horizontal asymptote here is y equals the ratio of the lead coefficients. Okay, so in other words, for example, if this was um, a 4x plus 3 over a 2x minus 1, the horizontal asymptote would not be 4, it would be 2 because of the lead coefficients here of 4 over 2, would simplify to just 2 there. Okay, 
So that's kind of how that works when your numerator degree is the same as your denominator degree. And then lastly, what happens when the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator? Okay, well, what did we get here, right? We had no horizontal asymptote, and that will be true in general. <coughs> okay, we do have something, um, a situation here where we could have a slant asymptote. Okay, so a um, slant asymptote would be like a diagonal asymptote. And a slant asymptote occurs when the, if the degree of the numerator is one more than the degree of the denominator. This is not super important for like calculus and stuff like that, but um, it is something helpful because you might see it in pre-calculus, okay? Um, how to find the slant asymptote. So you find the slant asymptote by doing long division. Long divide numerator and denominator. Okay. Um, yeah. So um, we'll do that here real quick. So in this th second example, the degree of the numerator is three more than the degree of the denominator, right? The degree of this denominator here is zero. All right. So we can't, don't have a slant asymptote there. But in this one, we do, right? Because the three x squared that degree is two. The degree of the denominator is just a one there. So we can, you know, find that slant asymptote. So I'll just go ahead and do that. So three x squared plus x minus one. divided by, my memory is like completely gone thanks to coronavirus. I mean, I haven't gotten it, but I just like, you know, my brain is like mush right now. So let's see here, three x squared minus three x, subtract the quantity, but instead of quantity, we'll subtract, we'll add the opposites. So we get four x minus one, and then plus four, four x minus four, subtract. And again, add the opposites, so we're gonna three, remainder three, okay? So, um, this is the equation for our slant asymptote. Okay, you can kind of throw out the remainder. We don't care about that. Um, but the answer to our long division, that is the slant asymptote. So the slant asymptote would have an equation y equals 3x plus 4. And so you could actually graph that. Um, of course, when you graph this line here, it's a linear equation, right, in slope intercept form, you graph it using a dotted line, okay? And again, it'll have that same kind of like um, border behavior like your other, um, like your other um, horizontal asymptotes do. Okay, so just keep that in mind as well. <clears throat> All right, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, just a couple other things just real quickly here to kind of like help you kind of see this um, idea, right? So, so remember to find a horizontal asymptote to, to, to determine, you know, like where these horizontal asymptotes occur, you're, you're plugging, you're kind of like trying to evaluate X as infinity, like you want to plug infinity in for x. You want to think about it kind of that way. So if you look at this here, right, you can kind of imagine, you know, plugging infinity into this function here. Um, well, if I plug infinity into the numerator, it's there's no place to plug it, so it just gives me a one. But if I plug infinity into the denominator, well, I'll have infinity minus one, which will really just be, you know, if I do that right here, I'll have one over infinity minus one, which is really just one over infinity. Now imagine having infinity in your denominator, right? When you have a huge denominator, the overall value of your thing goes to zero. The overall value of your fraction goes to zero, okay? Thus, we end up with horizontal asymptote at zero, right? Um, same thing right here, if you think about it, right? So here, if I plugged infinity in for x, I'd get infinity plus one over infinity squared plus one. Okay, which again, um, you know, if infinity plus one is basically infinity. Infinity squared plus one, well, infinity squared is going to be significantly bigger than infinity, right? If you take infinity and you multiply it by another infinity, this denominator is going to get bigger way faster than this numerator, and so the overall value of this thing will also go to zero, okay? So, so that bigger degree in the denominator results in a bigger infinity, and I know it's kind of like a weird idea to talk about, but this is conceptually kind of you know, what's going on here. It's a bigger infinity in the denominator always if your denominator has a bigger degree, and so therefore the overall value of this thing will go to zero. Okay, I know that's not quite so concrete, but that's the idea. Oh man, I'm messing up here. All right, um, then for this kind of situation here, right? Well, now if I plug in infinity, I have infinity plus three over infinity minus one, but that's really just infinity over infinity. And aha, we have like the same number. So Mr. Witt, infinity divided by infinity, shouldn't it cancel and just give us one? Well, kind of, yeah. And so that's why we end up with just one over one there when we kind of simplify. Again, it's not perfect, but it's, it's basically the idea that's going on there, okay? Um, and then this one right here, that I changed, 
be four times infinity over two times infinity. But again, these are both infinities, so they're gonna kind of cancel, leaving us with the four and the two, which again would result in that two. And then if you look over here at these, right, if I try and plug infinity up here, it's going to be infinity squared plus infinity minus, well, three times infinity squared, right, uh, plus infinity or minus one over infinity minus one. So again, you can kind of see here, this three infinity squared is going to overpower any of this junk back here, and it's going to be bigger than anything in there in the denominator. So if your numerator of your fraction gets really, 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 really big as the denominator, you know, can't keep up pace, that means the overall value of the fraction gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and so it's not going to approach any single number, it's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's why these go to infinity or negative infinity and stuff like that. You can follow a similar strain of logic by plugging in negative infinities here, okay, but one over negative infinity will still go to zero. Um, here it'll be negative infinity over negative infinity, the negatives will cancel out, so you still get positive one. And then here, if I plug in a negative infinity, well, it'll be positive infinity squared up here. Well, it's gonna be positive infinity squared because it's negative infinity times negative infinity, so it's positive, but it'll be negative infinity down here. So the overall thing will be negative infinity at the end because you're doing a positive times a negative there. Okay, so that's just a kind of a brief introduction about where this horizontal asymptote stuff comes from. Okay, um, so yeah, I will I will summarize this briefly um, in the next video for you guys. So. Um, hope that helps. If you have further questions or you want to ask more about it, please feel free. This is, this is again, um, concepts that we'll see again in pre-calculus and calculus for those of you kind of moving on. So I'll be happy to explain more if you're curious. Uh, again, please feel free to message me. Um, thanks, guys. And thanks for checking out this optional video.